there's been a lot of excitement about the rise of AI, but it turns out that 99% of the economic value created by this wave of modern AI is through one type of learning algorithm, which is called supervised learning. But what that means is learning input outputs or A to B mappings. Uh, for example, you can input an email, that's A, and the output B is, is this spam or not, zero or one. Uh, zero is not spam, one is spam. That's a spam filter. I uh, used to do some work on consumer loans, where the input A is a loan application, and the output B is, will they repay this loan? And so this turns out to be a good way to decide what loans to approve. Uh, machine translation, input English, output Hindi. Speech recognition, input an audio clip, output a text transcript. Um, a self-driving car, one of the key components is input a picture of what's in front of your car in the radar readings, and output what's the position of the other cars. Um, and so it turns out that this idea of input-output mappings, A to B, when you find the right context, the right application, the right business context, this turns out to be very useful and, and often very valuable. Um, the most lucrative application of this today might be online advertising, where all the large online ad platforms have a piece of technology where the input A is an ad and some information about you, and the output B is, will you click on this ad or not? Because with large online ad platforms, every click is money and being able to map from A to B. Input the ad in, some information about you, output, will you click on this or not? That turns out to be very lucrative. Maybe not the most inspiring application, but it's a very successful one. So um, if you heard about neural networks and deep learning, a lot of the excitement about neural networks and deep learning is that it's just a fantastic technology for learning or to figuring out these input-output or these A to B mappings. And uh, sometimes people ask me, hey Andrew, what's the difference between deep learning and the neural network? The two terms mean almost the same thing, all very, very similar things. It's just that uh, the term deep learning, you know, is maybe a better sounding brand. So that's the term that took off in the last several years. But um, really, several decades ago, um, neural networks were maybe very loosely inspired by the brain, but there's a type of software that simulates um, computations very loosely inspired by the brain. The details are completely different by the brain, but there's a little bit of inspiration there. And hence, these types of software wound up being called neural networks. So let me try to define deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the biggest category. Machine learning is smaller, and deep learning is even smaller. So AI encompasses a lot of different techniques. Uh, you can have software that learns to play games like chess or Go, uh, that's AI. Or you can figure out how to get a robot to find the shortest path to move from you know, here to there. Um, that's also a type of AI. Um, there's AI that can build databases so that when you pull up a map app, you know that this hotel has Wi-Fi, has not, doesn't have a swimming pool, opens at this, that's a type of AI technology called a knowledge graph, and that, that's also AI. But AI is a very broad field about getting computers to behave intelligently. A subset of that is called machine learning, which is a type of AI software that looks at a lot of data to make sense of that data. For example, if you show a computer thousands of pictures of cats and you tell it, hey, learn to recognize cats, that's machine learning because it's looked at data, namely thousands of pictures of cats, and has learned how to recognize cats. Maybe not the most important application, but for some reason in the AI world, we like to use cat examples, but lots of other, maybe other more interesting examples. Um, so, and so that's machine learning. And then a subset of machine learning is deep learning, which is one particular type of learning algorithms that has proven to work very, very well over the last several years. So in the last few years, we found that uh, deep learning or neural networks, when you feed them a lot of data, they're just able to learn things very, very well. So if you look at AI, machine learning, and deep learning, the fastest rising part of AI is deep learning, and deep learning has driven a lot of progress and excitement um, in the whole field of AI. One of the projects I'm excited about is using AI to transform manufacturing. Whereas the IT world has transformed the digital universe around us, it's really the manufacturing industry that transforms the physical world around us. So for example, today in manufacturers, there are hundreds of thousands of people using their eyes, using a human eye, to check a device, to check you know, manufacture something. Uh, lots of people are checking if this device has a scratch or a dent. And what we're able to do is use AI for automatic visual inspection. So what that means is we have an AI that inputs a picture 
of some device you've manufactured, you know, maybe a maybe an electronic device that that you have in your house. Uh, so the so it inputs a picture of the device and it outputs does this part or does this de device have a defect? And by doing that, we're often able to carry out inspection tasks at a level of reliability even greater than the typical human inspector. And so this is helping a lot of factories become uh, more efficient as well as more consistently um, make sure that they're shipping only you know, defectless goods.